Probate fights are nasty, exhausting, expensive. Hi, I'm Darren Finling from The Probate Pro, and whether you're just about to begin in a probate dispute or have been embroiled in a probate litigation matter for a period of time, this video should provide you with a lot of information about what to expect, how the process works. Now, what do we mean when we talk about probate litigation? It generally means fights that are occurring within the probate court involving a will, a trust, a fight over whether the will or trust are valid, what we call will contest cases, including duress, undue influence, mental incapacity. It may involve a fight within a conservatorship or a guardianship. It may involve how assets are owned, beneficiary designations. All of these kind of make up what we would call probate litigation, including elder abuse. If you're involved in one of these matters, this video should be really helpful to understand the timeline and the process involved in a probate matter. Let's start. First, a lawsuit of some sort is commenced. Now that lawsuit may be commenced in the probate court or in the circuit court or trial court, because it could be a federal court matter. But that lawsuit is filed identifying that there is a matter in dispute and there's a plaintiff and a defendant. Now, in a probate context, often it's not a lawsuit that triggers the dispute, but rather a petition, a proceeding in which somebody is making an allegation that somebody else did something wrong or that there's a problem with the matter. So for purposes of this first slide, when I use the term lawsuit, I'm using a very broad definition of a lawsuit to identify that there's a dispute that has arisen among parties to a probate related dispute. Once that matter has occurred, there is a service of the defendants. Now in a lawsuit, the defendants are actually served so that they get personal jurisdiction over them. But in a proceeding where a petition is filed, the service requirements are a little bit different. But nonetheless, this slide kind of walks you through, first of all, a matter is presented to be in dispute. Then secondly, a defendant or the parties upon which the matter is in contest gets served or notified of the pending action. The next thing that happens is that there's a response. And we call that the answer or responsive pleading. In this slide, it's referring to an answer to the lawsuit. But again, it could be a responsive pleading that relates to a petition that has been filed that addresses the dispute that's occurring. And then, of course, what we call discovery. And this term is quite broad. When we use the term discovery, we're using a term that gives an understanding of what the essence or the nature of that dispute is. So each side to the lawsuit or the uh, disputed matter have an opportunity to discover the facts upon which the other side is relying, including who the witnesses are, who any experts may be, what factual basis upon which they are relying in that dispute, as well as a turnover of all of those documents. And the discovery can occur in a variety of forms. It can occur in the form of written questions, we call those interrogatories, a request for admissions where questions are asked about whether something is correct, whether they admit it or whether they deny it. Of course, you're, very exper um, you're probably familiar with depositions in which under sworn testimony, uh, questions are posed in a live format. So these are the types of discovery that occurs and the rules of discovery are uh, pretty well understood that um, there is most information that's relevant to the proceeding is discoverable. And in Michigan, they're continuing to define and clarify what those discovery rules are so that discovery doesn't take on an animal of itself and that they're more honed or uh, centered on the issues that are in dispute. That discovery period can take a period of time. Sometimes it's up to 120 days, maybe even longer, depending on the complexity of the matter. The next step 
is often these matters are brought into what we call alternative dispute resolution, ADR. We, you've probably heard of it as facilitation or mediation. There's a variety of ways the litigation matters are uh, handled at this particular phase, but most of them go through some form of alternative dispute resolution, primarily because it is a way of resolving it short of trial. Trial can be quite expensive. So at this particular juncture, uh, within that litigation file, the a facilitator, a mediator, a case evaluator can help bring closure to the matter. And in most ADRs, uh, they're non-binding. There are some ADRs where you can agree to arbitrate in which there, the dispute is resolved through a binding arbitration, which means that the ruling of the arbitrator or arbitrators are the ruling of the case, just like a jury or a trial uh, in front of a judge would be. But ADR resolves a lot of cases. It doesn't resolve, often there are these things, what we call dispositive motions. These are motions that are filed with the trier of fact, the, the court, asking the court to resolve or dismiss either the entire matter or some of the matter. And many cases resolve themselves in summary, summary disposition motions um, and they don't actually make its way all the way to trial. Usually these motions occur after the discovery because often one of the de uh, defenses to these motions is that all of the information has not yet been turned over for the court to make a decision. And then of course, if you can't resolve it through all of the steps that have occurred up until this point, there's a trial. And trials in probate related matters, um, they occur, but they don't occur that often. This is not like Judge Judy or the People's Court where cases seem to begin and then get tried quite quickly. Trials are exhausting. They're expensive. They're emotional, time consuming. And when you get to this point, often litigants are really exhausted through this entire process because much time has passed by and the litigants just simply want to bring closure into their matter. But when that doesn't occur, a trial occurs and it may occur with a jury if a jury has been um, requested in the initial pleadings or it may occur in front of a judge and the judge makes that decision. Now, part of the other reason that trials are so risky is that often they're an all or nothing proposition, which means that you either win or lose. There's no middle ground. In the earlier um, phases of this process or this timeline through ADR and, and mediation or within your own settlement discussions, you can compromise in a way that isn't all or nothing. So you take some risks off the table. The other thing about a trial is that they're appealable. So if you believe that the trial is the finish line, that's not necessarily the case. So again, lots of risks about going to trial. And that's why most probate litigation files resolve themselves well before they get to that phase. But again, if you're going to try a case, imagine the complexity involved, not just in the probate statutes and case law, but the court rules. And it's very difficult to deal with these complex issues and probate practitioners who litigate these matters stay on top of the current law. They understand the court rules, the rules of evidence, the case laws that have come out uh, that may affect the matters that are before the court. So you really want a skilled, competent probate practitioner who's got a lot of seasoning behind them and have tried and litigated these matters uh, before the, the probate courts. They're familiar with the process. They know how to navigate through these complicated, complex issues. If you've got a probate related issue and you're going to have to go to trial, we really want to talk about what it means to have a good probate practitioner with you. Somebody that's going to guide you through this process and get you to the finish line. Advocate zealously, put all the tools at play you've got questions about a probate litigation file and want to bounce it off of us or retain our office, you're always welcome to call us at www.theprobatepro.com, which is our website, or 
877-YOU-ARE-FIRM. We're happy to discuss these matters with you.